بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد ايها الاحباب we left off, we were discussing the statements of Imam Baba Hari and we were reading some of the benefits from Shaykh Rabi bin Hadi al-Madkhali, Hafizullah Ta'ala. And it has reached me that the Shaykh, Hafizullah Ta'ala, his, his explanation, I think, is translated into English. This is a must. Buy it. Wherever it's uh, published, be in Allah Ta'ala, I believe probably Salafi Publications or one of the uh, affiliated organizations. And it's a very important treatise for the English speaker to have. A, very, a wealth, a treasure. So get it and benefit from it. And no, I don't receive proceeds and I'm not advertising, but I'm advertising for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala because it is a very important uh, beneficial. And if I had it here, I wouldn't need to even read the Arabic or translate on my own. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of any shortcomings. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Imam Baba Hari said, Rahimahullah ta'ala, may Allah have mercy upon you. Know that the religion is what came from Allah, the blessed and the most high. It is not something left to the intellect and opinions of men. Knowledge, uh, it is what comes from Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So do not follow anything based upon your desires and so deviate from the religion and leave Islam. And then he spoke about the companions and that they are the main body the, uh, of Ahlul Sunnah, uh, of, of the Jama'ah. They are the Jama'ah. Then the Shaykh said, as a commentary to this, half of Allah Ta'ala, he said, Wadeen fihi amur ghaybiyah لا تدركها الأقول فيجب الإيمان بها وتسليم بها وإن لم تدركها الأقول. The Sheikh said, "Have the Allah Taala." He said, "The religion is uh, comprised of those things which are issues that are uh, that have to do with the unseen world and that our intellect may not grasp." The, the intellect cannot grasp. We can't grasp. Uh, we can only grasp to the extent that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us as far as his al-asma'i wa sifat. But we can't describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala any further than that. We only know he's ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And that he possesses those, those attributes. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. We only understand what the Prophet والسلام, has come with in authentic ahadith. And that... Uh, those other issues, those are amur ghaybiya, and that that's amur uh, amur al ghayb, and that we only know that from Allah subhanahu wa taala, from the khabar Allah wa khabar Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And so the intellect may not w won't grasp many things. We can't fully grasp the qadr. We can describe the qadr to the extent that we understand it. We can describe the maratib al qadr, the different levels of qadr. We can describe many other things, but we don't know. Uh, infinite details, and anyone who can go really deep into that, then they uh, they should be very careful if they try to go too far in depth. But instead, we stop, and this is the minhaj of Ahlul Sunnah. They stop with the nasuls, they stop with the text, they stop with Kitabillah, with Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the methodology of the Salaf of this Ummah. And uh, so the Sheikh said, "Have the Allah Taala." He said, so it is an obligation to have Iman in this, to believe in this, to have faith in this, and accept it. Even if your intellect doesn't uh, grasp it. And then he mentioned, so maybe we'll c cut some of this short without going into all the Arabic. But he said, وَمِنْهَا تَشْرِعَاتِ يُدْرِكَ الْعُلَمَاءِ إِلَّهَا وَحِكَمَهَا وَحِكَمَهَا أَلَّتِي يَشْتَمَلَتْ عَلَيْهَا وَمِنْهَا مَا لَا يُدْرِكْ إِلَّا لَهَا وَحِكَمَهَا فَيَجِبُ الْإِمَانَ بِهَا وَتَسْلِيمَ لَهَا وَهَذَا هُوَ مِنْ هَجِ السَّلَفَ الصَّالِحِ تَجَاهُ النُّصُوصَ الشَّرْعِيَةِ شَرِيَةِ اللَّهِ The Shaykh said, and then from it, some of these affairs that are that deal with the um, unseen, is those uh, laws and those a uh, aspects of legislation, which the scholars, uh, there's those things which the scholars understand, and they they know the reason behind it, meaning they know the reason behind it, and they know the wisdom wisdom behind it, and what it entails, and then there are some issues, which they don't know the reason behind it, 
There are some ahkam, they just they know the nusus and they make a hukum from the nusus. The nusus is uh, what uh, is, is, is how the rulings are derived, but they don't know necessarily the reason behind it or there's some issues you don't they don't the ulama don't know the reason behind and that they do not know the wisdom behind not everything in the quran and the sunnah do we know all the infinite hukum uh, all the 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 infinite hikam the dif, the uh wisdom behind it for example let me give you one example wiping over the uh the khufain, wiping over the socks or the hoofs we don't know the all the wisdoms and reasons behind why we wipe over the top of our sock instead of the bottom because the bottom is where you're walking and get dirty but instead we make taslim the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam illustrated for us that in many a hadith uh, and this is his sunnah and the sunnah of his companions and the, and the way of the minhaj uh, salaf al-salih and so we accept that, we follow that. We don't necessarily have to go into and try to figure out, and we will probably never know the, uh, all the wisdoms behind it, or the wisdom behind it, or even the, uh, uh, or, or the reasoning behind it. Maybe the, the ilal is to make, uh, make it easy upon the ummah, to make takhfif on washing the feet. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But that's just an example. To let us uh, to show for us that Ahl Sunnah may not know, or you know, we may not know all of the reasons and all of the wisdom behind a particular ruling, but we just accept it. Taslim fi qalb. And the Sheikh said, "Wahada huwa minhaj salaf al and that is the methodology of the salaf al So that's what the salaf were upon, if you want to know. Tijahu Nusus Shariatillah. Then the Shaykh said, Hafadullah Ta'ala, Emma Ahlal Ahwa, Wad Dalal, Wakalam, Wa Falasifa. For you cut the Muna Akulihim, Ala Nusus Ilahia, Wa Nebuia. Where is Amuna and Al Akla, you feed the Yakin, when Nusus a Shara, lied, la to feed the Yakin. This is very heavy and important. Uh, stuff to give you an understand about Ahl Kalam, the Ashadis, uh, Mu'tazila, philosophers, all these because they come from a similar, uh, they stem from a similar origin, and we'll leave it to what the Sheikh said, uh, we'll explain it sufficiently. So the Sheikh said, Hafidullah Ta'ala, Amma Ahl al Ahwa, he said, as for the people's desires, and the people of misguidance, and the people of Kalam, so when you hear these Ashadis and other people say, Ahl Kalam is good, Ahl Kalam is the best, we're Ahl Kalam, and stuff like this. Know that the Salaf wrote books called Dhimma Kalam, Wa Ahliha. These are some famous treaties of the Salaf of this Ummah. They hated it. And they had a very strong motive against those people who came up with Kalam, because Kalam, they're using their logic and their intellect over the Nusus and to judge the Nusus. Here's what the Shaykh said. For yuqaddimuna aquluhum. That Ahl Kalam and the philosophers and the people of misguidance and the people of desires, that they give preference to their intellect over the, if you want to say, the godly nasus, the, the, um, the sacred text, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's speech and the prophetic speech, alayhi salatu wasalam. So they use, they take the intellect, they use their intellect as a overriding, some, in, in certain judgments to override even those, uh, those other texts. If the text, if the Quranic text and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam don't jive with their aqul, with their intellect, then what they will do, then they will change the meaning of those texts. Now, of course the Ashadis, they don't totally uh, attempt to destroy the Nusus and say, nope, 
Allah didn't say that. Nope, the Messenger ﷺ didn't say that. They don't say that. But rather what they do, the way they do negate the nusus, is that they change the meaning to fit their intellect. Let's give an example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al Karim. Ar-Rahman ala Arsistawa. The most merciful rules above his throne. Ahl Kalam, and from them being the Ashaira, they'll say, Yeah, Ar-Rahman ala Arsistawa. That's an ayat in the Quran. However, it means. It doesn't mean he rolls above his throne because if you say he rolls, he rises, then he's like his creation because creation rises. I'm rising from the chair. So then they're saying we're making tashbih. وَعِيَادًا بِاللَّهَ مِنْ ذَلَكَ Allah said it. The Prophet ﷺ said it. Accept it. That's the minhaj of Ahl Sunnah. But Ahl Kalam, they'll get into those issues and they'll say, no, no, no. That's making tashbih. So what rising, istowa, what it really means is istola. They change the, the left of the word. This is called uh, tahrif. Uh, tahrif al lefdi That they're changing the actual text itself, the word itself, changing it to, to get another meaning so that they can extract another meaning. And the meaning that they abstract from it is completely unbefitting to associate with Allah Azza wa Jal. It has a whole other crazy meaning. That if you say uh, that it means, it doesn't mean estola, it doesn't mean estoa, you know, to rise. He didn't rise above his throne. Estola. Estola means to like take by force. Okay? That, so then they're saying as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had to take something by force. So even this is, this is belittling Allah azza wa jal. Because he's the creator of the heavens and earth. He doesn't have to take anything. He's subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's one of the ways that uh, the people of Kalam, that they distort the text and they use their intellect to make the judgments with the text. Then the Shaykh says, This is a big uh, issue that you have, especially with the more extreme Asharis uh, from the Mutaqaddimeen, some of the early ones. And that they say, they claim that the intellect, that your intellect is something, so from your, 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 your senses and your intellect, that this, you feed the yaqeen, that this is the... Uh, that this affirms certainty on an issue is your intellect because you can see it you can hear it you can smell it you can taste it you can rationalize it then that's how we determine truth that's how we determine something is the haq and whether it's certain that's what they say Ahl Sunnah says la Ahl Sunnah is, is on something different and so then they believe the text the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu doesn't you feed the yaqeen it does not, it is not the measurement for ascertaining the truth and the, the certainty that it takes, a, that, though, that the Quranic text and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ requires our intellect. This is a, a shameful and facid understanding. So then they use their, uh, their intellect to precede the text. And they claim that the aql, that the intellect, is the, is the origin. And if there's a contradiction between uh, the text, like the Qur'an and the Sunnah, and their intellect and the aql, then... They, they believe that it's an obligation. And these are, this is where the usul of fiqh comes in, and this is where you find a lot of, uh, you know, from some of the usuliyin or usuliyun, the people of usul of fiqh, you'll find a lot of them, the early ones, matter of fact, not a lot, probably majority by far, had some issues in, 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 in Aqidah. They had Ashari tendencies. And so with that, they used to, and there's many reasons without getting into depth, but one of the reasons is 
dealing with uh, in the Arabic language. Another reason that in going in depth with the Arabic language and using that to over the Sharia Mustalahat. And there's other reasons. And so they believe if they find a contradiction between their aql, their intellect, their understanding, and the Sharia text, that they must take the the Sharia text, they must give take the text and begin to look at the um, they, that, that the text must be find a compromise between their intellect and their understanding. So this is a very dangerous uh,